S-Log3, S-Gamut3, dot Cine. Came in wonderfully. I mean, we, we pretty much didn't have to do anything when it came in. Just I think we just mainly did minor contrast adjustments. You look at the material, you look at the skin tone, your primaries, they fall where they should. There is no twisting and turning the hue of the color because it's not quite right. It just works. With S-Log3, with the F55, it is beautiful. Everything is there. Even just, if I reset everything, uh, even just the very simple tonal mapping that I decide that it's good for this particular shot, it took me five seconds. I'm there. I noticed how fast that was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it it, it makes very easy everything right, at that point. Right. The simplicity of the workflow, to have the ability during the stage of the shooting to have one box where the material come in, we set up a look, uh, the look is coordinated with the final platform, either with Pablo or Resolve, and uh, all the CDL will track across. Right here, we review the look, we review the decision made during the set and the shooting, and it's just a matter of fine-tuning. We don't have to reinvent the color correction every time. If I want to use one word to describe the new mapping, of the new logarithmic mapping, I will use more balanced. Uh, S-Log2 was mapping the same amount of information that 13 and a half stop of the camera, a kind of a, a lot of mid-tones and then gently roll the highlights and roll the lowlights. That it's great as a starting point if I'm not doing a lot of color correction. Here the distribution between the mid-tone, the shadow and the highlights, it's much more linear. So I have more uh, distribution of those values, those codes. So more of a pure log encoding. And more of a pure log encoding. When I'm going down and I'm grabbing the shadow, I'm really grabbing the shadow without too much effort. The color corrector just grab them and I can bring them where I want it. And the same for the highlights. And especially for the highlights, you never feel that you are clipping or you are crushing too much at the point that you don't have detail. It feels more like a film camera. Both S-Log2 and S-Log3 both have plenty of range. Uh, I just found that the S-Log3 came in a lot easier. I think S-Log2, I had to do a lot more work. You just need to do a little bigger adjustment to get it into uh, a nice working space. Whereas with the S-Log3, it's kind of already there. That big adjustment has already kind of been done for me. So that's, that's the biggest difference I see between the two. I mean, they both have great range. It's just getting the S-Log2 takes maybe a little bit more work than the S-Log3. The color map in the gamut, it's really, really good. Um, it goes in, it looks right. I don't have to do any extra color correction to get it. I don't have to do a color management to try to bring those primary in either by eye or by math. I can just start to color. And that's, that's a great advantage from the color's point of view because you can sit with your DP director and just be creative instead of trying to managing science before to do anything creative. No remedial work, just actually creative work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there is less color space manipulation and more just having fun with the DP. Yeah, which is the way it should be. Yeah. When you brought in the S-Log3, S-Gamut3 dot Cine footage, uh, we pretty much were able to, to land in a really good place from the beginning. I think we just did a little, little contrast adjustment, a little saturation adjustment, but they were pretty minor adjustments overall. I think the, the image looked pretty good from the get-go. You could bring out every little nuance of detail of 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 color, um, and and especially in the 4K range. And the beauty of the image is that the resolution is all there, but it's not harsh. It's natural. It gives a really nice roll off. But yet, if you want to really dig something out, you can dig it out without having to fight the image. This current shot there's one grade on it and it's going from bright whites to deep Like the Mary blacks. Poppins sign, you're seeing the, all the detail yeah, the, on that. The incredibly Poppins bright sign. Light. But when it pans away from the light, you're able to look at the image, look down the street, and you see everything. Yeah, I remember actually one of the shots uh, where we were panning across the Sunset Boulevard, you could see down an alley that wasn't lit at all and we That's could pretty right. much see a lot of shadow detail there and then there were people in in the buildings, which we could see walking around, I mean, there was a lot of range in there. I think you actually had me pull the shadow detail down, actually, in the, in the, in the alley. It's quite a bit of dynamic range, that's, which is always the way you want to start. You want to have more information. So if you want to throw it out, then that's great. There's definitely a benefit to shooting raw, which 
which everybody knows about. But in a low-budget environment, you, you can't necessarily take advantage of those benefits because the, the cost is too much. So I think the XAVC would definitely be easier for a lower lower budget production to deal with than raw since the, the file size is much smaller. So as far as the back end, you're not having these huge files to deal with. You're having much smile, smaller files. It's easier to move around, easier to bring in here. I can get the files and directly start working off them right in the color corrector. I come traditionally from film school. Therefore, I like to work with a filmic tonal range, with a filmic lookup table. And I like when a camera can be ingested and used as a log underneath uh, either a simple color tool uh, to give me a tonal range that mimic a sort of a logarithmic, a logarithmic stock that I like. With the S-Log3, I find it captures the dark areas, it captures the light areas. There's no clipping or compression of the highlight areas. I think it's a great way to work because it gives the cinematographer a camera that feels like a stock and I don't have to think about the technology. What Sony is doing with the F55 and, and with the, S, the S-Log3 is they're giving us the ability to capture that image in its, in its purest form.